So I've been putting this off a little bit because of the state of everything that's here at the moment. This is all very much just temporary, just to get me through not having any power or any other way of charging tools and all the rest of it. It's just a, a quick overview of the electrical system, what we've got installed so far, what's going to be happening over the next few weeks, and where all of the circuits come from and to and what they're used for. Uh, so there's been previous videos on building these battery packs. You'll notice that now there's two of them. Uh, these are each 280 amp hour packs at 48 volts nominal. There's two of those. So in total we have 560 amp hours of battery storage right here. It's a, it's a big heavy chunk of battery. This one is pretty much done. It's all all 3D printed brackets and joints and it's it's nice and solid. This one needs a needs the same treatment. All of that power is going into a bus bar at the back, um, positive and negative, with two Victron smart shunts, which are monitoring battery independently at the moment. So one battery goes into one smart shunt, and one battery goes through the other smart shunt, so that I can see a little bit more information about what these batteries are doing. Because the, the JK BMSs, which are installed, um, weren't here originally. In fact, this one used to be a Dali BMS, which, as you can see, is no longer connected for all of the good reasons that Andy's off-grid garage has previously gone over. So I would link to his videos at the bottom. If you want to learn more about these BMSs and this particular type of battery, he's the one to watch. Got loads of data, good stuff. From that bus bar, it goes off into the DC switchboard, which we'll have a look at in a minute, and onto the inverter and charge controller, which is an all-in-one unit by that. Uh, above that bus bar, we've got the solar disconnects, and over in the far left, in the shadows, it is the AC switchboard. So I'm sure this is going to be the, the shock and disgust of all the real electricians around that might see this, but as I said, temporary, just while everything is uh, kind of being worked out where it needs to go, this is what we're, we've got left. Um, you can see some cables that are not really conduited yet, but for the majority of things, the circuits at least that go around the bus, we've got conduit for everything. So eventually there will be no cable that doesn't have a conduit around it. Just to add a little bit of stability and you know, protection against abrasion and you know, vibration breaking things and you know, shorting things out, which we don't want after wiring up the entire bus. From here, we got uh, two 25 mil cables that are going into the top of the switchboard. Uh, one of them feeds directly into the 150 amp breaker, which then goes on through that cable to the inverter. The other breakers are sending the battery voltage through the breakers and then off to 48 volt circuits around the bus. Then I have two 20 amp uh, 24 volt step down converters which are then powering 24 volt circuits which also go around the bus. These are okay for now. Um, eventually these will be housed in their own box. Um, at the minute these are just sitting here. The reason that we went for 48 volts was just to gain a bit of efficiency in the inverter and for future power needs, making sure that everything is going to be um, able to be powered from the inverters. We'll follow this wire over to the inverter and we'll have a look. So this is the uh, 5000 watt all-in-one inverter. I think it's known by many brands uh, like Icona. This is a 48 volt all-in-one. It takes solar in, AC in, AC out and battery in and out and it manages all of it for us. I mean, at the moment this uh, 5000 watt inverter is running everything that I can throw at it, including a MIG welder um, and an air compressor and everything else, and it doesn't skip a beat, so so far they're, they're not bad, um, and it's been running constantly for all through the summer. So far, so good. Having two of these inverters running in parallel, which they can do with an expansion card, this is then AC out through here into a 
a combiner box which will eventually take the input from both inverters and then on to the AC switchboard. The AC switchboard is taking two, I think, six mil tails. They're the really big double insulated cables coming in through the top there. My hand is not that close to it, don't worry, I'm not going to be touching it. Uh, the input from that is coming from that combiner, so that when there's two inverters being used, there's one input going into this. So we've got what is called in the UK, don't know what it is in the rest of the world, but this is a split load RCD system. We've got uh, an RCD with one set of uh, breakers, and then we've got another RCD and another set of breakers. These go for the upstairs and these downstairs. Nothing's labelled yet because nothing is, is permanent, but eventually all of these will be nicely labelled. Obviously off here we'll take the feeds for air conditioning and everything else that will eventually go in here. But, but as I said, this is going to be eventually a 10,000 watt inverted system. There should be, <laughs> there's no room for messing about with, with that, so everything on the AC side is again conduited, or will be, I know this isn't. But yeah, it's all up to UK standard. Um, I'm sure somebody will spot something. Don't think this is going to stay on this side of the bus. But part of what we've got to do next is to actually measure up and get some aluminium purchased so that we can reclad the back end of this bus. Um, because as you can see, it's pretty grotty. Um, this is where originally all of the fabric that was covering the entire inside of the cargo bay has been ripped out. Uh, so all of this back wall, all the way along, will get reclad with some nice aluminium sheet and then we'll put everything back in in its final position. Uh, so the measurements that I take now will go towards basically planning where all of these boxes need to go. Because it doesn't look like we have an awful lot of space There's a lot of boxes and not a lot of room. These are all of the engine control stuff. Um, I'm, I'm going to be trying to avoid touching those as much as I can. Uh, we've got network cables that are coming here. Uh, those network cables, probably some of it are going to be taking serial comms from here. And probably from the BMSs as well. Um, they'll go to the server cabinet at the front, which we will go and have a look at shortly. One more thing to note is the solar isolators which live at the top. There's um, a feed coming from the right hand side and a feed coming from the left hand side and those go directly upstairs to the um, each of the solar arrays on each side of the bus. So that is the right hand side and that is the left hand side. It's completely dark outside at the moment so nothing's coming through that. And that is it. This is a dedicated 48 volt feed which is going to the front comms cabinet. Um, so we can put a clamp meter on this and find out what it's using. Let's just zero this. So we got, if you can see that, one amp. One point one amp. Oh, we'll call it, we'll call it one amp. Pretty sure these are not that accurate, but one amp at about fifty odd volts. Yeah, we we'll call that fifty fifty five watts. Just to run the all of the server at the minute, which we will nip to the front of the bus. I apologise for the uh, the noise of fans, the diesel heaters on at the minute because it's night time outside and it's quite cold. I've just opened up the rack now just to show how we're using that single dedicated power line. Um, I know it's pretty dark in there but the main power comes in, it goes into this short distribution bar and then into a set of breakers and then is split off into each of those mean well in racked power supplies. Uh, there's, uh, I think it's yeah, 12, 24, and 48 volts. 
So having a look back here, this is a 12 volt router. We've got a 48 volt PoE switch and a 48 volt CCTV system. The servers that will be in this rack, which are just Raspberry Pis, they are PoE powered. The CCTV system is also uh, PoE for all of the cameras that are dotted around. And then our little patch bay where all of the network is coming in, which we can see is all of the cabling from the rest of the bus, which is, you can't really see it, but conduited into the bottom here. So that's the comms rack. Not something that you find every day in a bus, but it's going to be required for the long periods of time that we plan on using this. Storage of all the media, running all of the systems on the bus, data logging, all of that cool, cool stuff. Not bad for your home server setup. Still got the trusty old 24 volt fridge. But these are just uh, Quick Charge 3 uh, ports. In the, each of the back of these sockets, there's a little quick charge uh, power board which takes 24 volts in, and then the controller negotiates power delivery, quick charge three, quick charge two, all the, all the rest of those standards. So, for instances where we need more power than just the quick charge three, so if we want to use like proper high power 60 watt and 100 watt uh, USB, uh, the controllers that I can get will basically take the tw same 24 volts in and will give you a full 60 and 100 watt outputs from them. Uh, we can use that to charge laptops, uh, run uh, flat screens, all of that stuff. The purpose being that we can take all of the load off the inverter or as much of the load off the inverter and reduce how much power conversion goes on the least amount of losses from power conversion, especially if it comes through the AC circuit, the better. So here's a good example about how these uh, two different circuits are being used. The 24 volt runs all of the electronics stuff, and then anything like heavy loads will be on the 48 volt. So you'll see from, if I just have a look up here, all of the, the spotlights that are fitted at the moment they're all on the 48 volt system but the strip lights that are in the floor run on the 24 volt system so I think we'll finish off with uh, just what this be operating like um, so now we've, we've seen how the electrical system is planned to work and installed up until this point the server downstairs and all of the networking components that have gone into it so far this is the, as much of a test bed for what will be going into the rest of the bus as anything. Um, but just to give an example, we've uh, got a very basic uh, control panel for the front area of the bus. And we can turn on and off and change the speed. That's much better. We'll keep it like that. Change the speed of the ventilation. And we can turn the light strips on and off and change the color temperature and then we can change it to a color so full RGB um, I think we'll have something less crazy though and you've also got the ability to turn the main lights on and off as well so added geek points basically um, the notification panel over there should allow us to kind of have some feedback from the bus uh, you should be able to see it twinkling at the minute the, none of the code or anything has gone into controlling this yet so each of the controllers for the different areas of the bus one at the front one in the middle one at the back will will handle all of the sensors in that area for uh, temperature humidity um, it'll do presence detection as well, there's a, there's a millimeter wave detector built into that sensor unit. All of the strip lights throughout the bus are all uh, controlled through Zigbee units and 
everything else is controlled by those ESP32 control boards which are mounted in the walls. It, it's not a smart system if it can be made dumb by, I don't know, knocking out a network connection or a single battery. It's, it's all been designed to be as usable as like a normal environment as much as a smart environment. Uh, and all of the technology, as the project manager has dictated, has to be hidden. So you're not going to be overwhelmed by like buttons and displays and panels and all the rest of it. You're going to have very basic switches and the rest of it should be smart enough but invisible. Yeah, we'll go into more depth with the, uh, with the controllers at some point. Um, that's it for now.